Welcome back, Mike Hatfield here. Today I wanted to give you the next part of our dispensation series. This will be Disp Understanding Dispensations, part one. You may notice here, I have a small little whiteboard. Um, I got the idea from Robert Breaker because he does a really good timeline on his whiteboard. And for someone who's a visual learner, uh, it's really helpful to kind of see when exactly we're talking about. Due to the camera, it will be flipped, but we have the cross and the bloodshed of Jesus Christ, his death. And then this, technically, for me, is going forward into the future, to the right-hand side. For you guys on the camera, it actually looks like it's going to the left. So this would be past for me, but for you guys, it looks like it's current. So for the sake of the video, this should be your beginning of the chart. So I put an X here because this is where we're going to start as far as the timeline or chronological series of events that we're going to go through through our dispensations. And I'll keep this up here and I might write a couple things like what dispensation it is or, you know, maybe up like Adam and Eve or Noah or you know, Moses or something as we go on. Open up your Bible here today to the book of Genesis chapter 1. And we'll start here in verse 26. And this will be our first dispensation that we, we start to look into here. And this is the, the dispensation or age of innocence. And this all takes place in the Garden of Eden. A couple things to mention before. Um, according to the scriptures, we don't know how long Adam and Eve lived in the Garden before the fall. It doesn't say that they were... 100 years old, 5 years old, nothing. It just, boom, one day we're here. Uh, sometime later, we're sinning and falling. Um, there's a couple theories based off of some other scriptures we can get to later that they say or they believe that Adam was in the garden for like 33 years. And they try to tie that to he's a type of Christ and Jesus Christ was on the earth for roughly 33 years. I can see that um, if you add in the age that he died and then you got to do the whole thing on time with a day's a thousand years and all that. We'll kind of maybe get into that here on our next topic, uh, the second dispensation of conscience. Of conscience. But for now, let's try to keep it simple because um, that's all this is. This isn't a detailed study on dispensation. It's just a, a quick kind of beginner's guide to it. I, I strongly suggest you guys go to your church and ask more questions or research it yourself. Read the Bible yourself and find out. But uh, the age of innocence, dispensation of innocence, the first one. Here we go. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Verse 27, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So a couple of things I want to point out here. Before man is created, okay? Man isn't created until verse 27. We start in verse 26. So this whole verse here, God already has it set up where man will have dominion over things on the earth here. Um, dominion over the fish, the birds, all the creepy things on the ground and the cattle and the beasts of the earth, right? So before man is even created, God knew man is going to be in charge of these things. We'll have dominion over over everything on the earth, pretty much. Or not everything, but over these, you know, over those things. Uh, secondly, I want to note here, God created man. There is no evolution. There is no... Big Bang Theory, we came from monkeys, from dolphins, from rocks in the sea or anything. God created man. We are created in God's image. Now the word here for image, you want to look, because later on, the Lord Jesus Christ was an icon. Icon is an exact like copy. 
an image is not an exact copy. So we, we are not exactly like God, but we were made in his image, in his likeness. Verse 28 here, we start to see some, uh, some orders, some commands from the Lord, some things that we are to do while, while Adam and Eve were in the garden here. Uh, God bless them, which is always a good thing. And that's one thing you notice. God didn't bless the ocean when he made it. He didn't bless the, the sun and the stars. He didn't bless the cattle when he made them. He blessed man. Keep that in the back of your head. But here we see some basic instructions. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over fish. Foul the air and every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So we see that we are given instructions, orders, what to do with what. All right. Let's continue reading. Verse 29. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. Ooh, excuse me. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every thing that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. In the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So if you notice here, God gave us what we needed. God not only gave us a task, gave us some instruction, uh, a task to complete, but he also gave us, um, he gave us food, he gave us supplement. And if you notice here, he gave us the herbs and the seeds and the fruits. He didn't give us, we didn't eat meat. God didn't give us the cattle to eat yet. Now that will come later uh, in the age of Government, disciplinary government. We might not get to that in this video, probably the next video. Uh, but God gave Noah permission to eat meat. So at this point in time, Adam and Eve pretty much were vegetarians. Um, and this, we can continue on here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Here's some more of the instructions that we're, some more tasks we are given from the Lord. <clears throat> Chapter 2, verse 15, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. So God put man, put Adam, in the garden. And he put him in there to be a keeper, to be a groundskeeper. Maybe he was uh, trimming the bushes. Maybe he was picking the thorns out or helping divvy out and spread seed for the animals to have so the field would grow or something. Who knows exactly. Verse 16, The Lord God commanded, commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayst freely eat. So like we look back in chapter 1, now we see, yeah, we're eating all the seeds, all the fruits, all the, all the herbs, you know, all the crop we can have. Still no meat, but we're eating all these crops. Of every tree. Verse 17. But of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So now we see the first thing that God tells us to do that's not a do, but it's a don't. The Lord God tells Adam, do not eat from this tree. And he tells Eve, do not eat from this tree. Something we want to remember here for our next series here for when the fall comes up. He says, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So, you can look at it. In theory, you could go climb it, play around in it, whatever. Touch it, feel it, smell it. Don't eat it. That's all he says. Don't eat this fruit. Simple order. Verse 18, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. So we see here, you know, this is still, uh, there's two accounts of creation between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. One's a more literal, one's a more poetic, you could say. Um, I believe that between the two combined is the truth that, you know, God created man and woman. Um, but here we still see 
We have dominion over the animals. We are to tend and work and nurture in the garden. And we're also not supposed to eat that fruit. Um, and that pretty much is how the world works up until the fall. Now, again, we don't know how much time is in between now when God created man until he gets to the fall. Um, some, like I said, some scholars say it's like 30 something years. Now here's, here's some odd questions, right? So when God made Adam, we always see on TV and movies and posters and coloring books, right? Adam and Eve are like grown human beings. You know, Adam's a 30-year-old man in most pictures or portrayals. Like, was Adam made as a baby? I, I don't know. You know, was Eve a baby? Like, who who held the bottle and nursed him? Something something funny to, to look at. Now, that doesn't, because that answer is not in this book, it doesn't shake my faith or my belief in that at all. Um, that's just simply one of the many questions, you know. But here we'll look, we're going to take a look at our second dispensation here. And this is the age or dispensation of conscience. And this one all deals with the fall, the curse, and the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Let's turn here to Genesis chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. Ooh, I'm so sorry, I keep yawning today. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now I want to pause. Do you see... Where Eve has already messed up. Back in Genesis 2. Um, verse 17. It says. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou hast eat thereof. Thou shalt surely die. God didn't say anything about touching it. God didn't say anything about. You know. Because you're, you're there to keep the garden. I'm sure it might have had some thorns and thistles that may need to be trimmed up and cleaned up right i doubt they had to maybe they had to put some soil fertilization down to help it grow i don't know but he didn't say anything bad about touching and notice right off the bat eve already either didn't listen or i was very confused and didn't ask the lord a question i guess but here it says that Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch of it, lest ye die. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in that day that ye, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her. Ooh, pardon me. And he did eat. Now we'll stop here in verse 6 for now. So we see where they both disobeyed God. And people always try to throw this up, or throw this out there and bring this up. Eve was the one that initially ate the forbidden fruit. And I sometimes wonder, what if Adam would have said no? What if Adam would have been, you know, a little tattletale and said, Oh, Eve, you're not supposed to eat that. And he goes and he runs, Lord, Lord, Eve's eating the fruit. Eve's eating the fruit. You know, been a little teacher's pet tattle, tattletale, so to say, you know. Would the curse, would sin only be upon woman? I don't know. But the point is, is that Eve ate first and then Adam ate. And that is a very strong thing you have to learn and understand. Because later in the Bible, and we'll talk about this once we get probably another video or two from this. 
when Paul is setting up the church. Uh, he, uh, he says that, you know, woman is not to usurp authority over man in the church because, because Adam was formed first and Eve sinned first. Now, what was that sin? I don't want to get too much into the whole female pastor thing because I, I believe that's biblical doctrine. I don't believe in female pastors. I just don't. That's just, that's not according to the scriptures of God. The main thing we see here is that Adam and Eve both disobeyed God. And they both directly ignored God's word, God's instructions, God's care. And that's a very big thing. Now we're going to look at what happens as a result of this. Because they ate that fruit, now we have the curse. The curse is upon all the land. Everybody thinks the curse is just sin. The curse is, is death, ultimately. And that is upon all the earth. Look here in verse 14. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust shalt thou eat all of the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of, of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall bring it, bring it forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt, shalt thou eat bread, till thou return to the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. So we see here uh, a couple of things here with the curse. What is the curse? What like What are some key points in the curse? Well... We see the serpent's curse. And the serpent's curse, it, there's a lot more going on with it than what, when you first read it, you first might not understand. <clears throat> um, he he sit here, that he's cursed above all the cattle and above every best of the field. Okay? So every animal, every creature, every living thing is above the serpent. Like quite literally. Snakes, serpents are down on the ground, slithering around. And every animal literally is taller, is above them. Okay? But look here. It says, Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Now this is kind of an, an odd one. How is that a punishment for the snake? When you think about it. The snake, serpent, they already slither on their belly on the ground. So how is this really... Uh, a curse or um, how is it really you know really a bad thing affecting it at all it's like me saying you know viewer your curse is to drink water for the rest of your life well, I already drink water okay well now like you can't have coffee you can't have soda pop can't have alcohol can't have juices can't have milk okay you can see where at first glance, it doesn't seem that bad. It seems kind of like, okay, it doesn't make sense. But then you really see what it is. Here, it's he's on his belly upon the ground. It means he, he's a bottom feeder. He's below everything physically, spiritually, emotionally. He says here, he'll put enmity between the woman and, and, and him, and thy seed and her seed. And thou shalt bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his feet. Here we see... Basically, we, we, we see our first promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. All the way back in the book of Genesis. Because who is the seed? Who is the seed that we see of here, right? That seed one day will grow up and will be the Lord Jesus Christ. Born of a virgin. 
of the perfect sinless life. And we'll see that here later on in a couple of, just a couple of videos from here. As for the woman, her curse is uh, pain during childbirth, childbearing. And you have to be uh, submissive. You have to be submitted under someone, under the man, under Adam. And uh, I don't know what that is. Everything's going wrong in this video. I'm sorry, fellas. <laughs> Um, but we see here the woman's the woman's curse is that basically she she has to be subdominant and she's going to have excruciating pain during childbirth. As for the man, as for Adam, uh, blah, 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 the ground is cursed pretty much. So everything you do in the ground and in the earth is going to be hard, tedious, laborsome. It says here that like the ground will not quite yield what it used to. You, know, you, ever, you look at some of these farmers and sometimes they have a good harvest and they have a lot of crop that comes out and then sometimes they have a not so good harvest and it's like, man, I barely got any potatoes out of the field. It's part of the curse. Thorns and thistles. I believe that, I kind of believe that back in Genesis 1 and 2 when they were caretaking the garden, there wasn't as many thorns and thistles and briars and, and you know poison ivy, stuff that really hurts man. But the big thing we see here is the fall. Now sin from this point on, from this point until the Lord Jesus comes back with his kingdom for you know 7,000 years from then, is sin will run rampant. Sin will run rampant on the face of the earth in millions and millions and millions and millions and billions and billions and billions of people will die due to sin. Because ultimately, the, the end result of sin is death. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that gift comes from one of the curse that's going to come from, that's going to go to the serpent. And that is the seed, the seed of woman. And this ultimately, because there's so much sin, this ultimately runs rampant here until uh, it gets so bad that God has to destroy it. Um, we can turn here to uh, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, or verse 3. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, but that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bare children with them, the same became mighty men, which were, were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So things get so bad from this point on. Things get so bad that the Lord God just ultimately says, I've had enough. We have to just, just destroy it. You know, you see the meme of... The, the house is on fire, right? It's burned up in ashes. And the, the wife's like, oh, well, there's a spider, but I got it. Yeah, you know, the Lord God said, I just have to burn it. I just have to get rid of all of it. And he does it ultimately with a flood, the great deluge. And he's going to send in this flood, and the waters will come in. And other than one man and his immediate family, that man is Noah, his wife, his three kids and their three wives. Eight people get on the ark on this boat. We'll talk about this in our next video. And God has to only kill every living thing on the planet because of sin. Like I said earlier, Romans 6 25, or 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Friends, don't, don't live with sin. Don't condone sin. Don't put up with it. Don't let it in your life. Sin is a curse. Sin is a plague. Sin is a poison. 
And one of these days, your sin will find you, and it will kill you, ultimately. And you might think that you're, you're running the race right now, and everything's fine. Well, one of these days, that sin will catch up to you. If it don't catch up to you in this life, it will in the next. Because the Lord God sees everything. When you stand before a throne, before a holy and just God, and he judges you for that. You don't you won't want to be there. All right, friends. I hope this was informative. I tried to keep it somewhat quick. It's still 25 minutes. This video, we went through the age of innocence and the age of conscience. And we see here God created man and woman in his image. God gave man some basic instruction on how to live and keep in the garden. And then ultimately, man disobeyed God ate the forbidden fruit, sin entered into the world, and we're going to see here next, God had to kill every living thing to get rid of the sin. I hope this video is a blessing to you. I hope you learned something from it. Um, I look forward to seeing y'all next time here, and we'll get into our other two. I'm probably going to have in our second video here, I'm going to go over dispensation of government and the dispensation of promise. This will deal with Noah and Abraham. And then after that, we'll get into the law. And then hopefully we'll have time in that video to get into uh, the age of grace, the church age. There's two more we got to do. And then I'll probably have to do the age of kingdom, the millennial kingdom. Well, I might be able to do the age of kingdom and tribulation in one video. So hopefully only three more. Three more. And should be good thank you all for all your support and for words of encouragement it's always nice to see thumbs up and comments and if you have me on facebook i'm trying to not be on there as much but uh if you have me on there say hello or you know got any questions for me by all means i'll try to help you out the best i can leave a thumbs up share this video with your friends and have a blessed evening